the dark matter <laughs> 52 <laughs> over <laughs> Luca. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, a couple of words about us. I don't know. I can see, can I see new faces today? <laughs> okay, well, let's uh, do a quick start. Who's first time here? <laughs> yeah, so you guys. So. Uh, for you guys, uh, for you guys, a bit of words about us. Uh, actually, that's our current team, uh, so two of us, you can see us here. Um, yeah, so it was started by Boy almost 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Then uh, Jamilus joined, and then the Russians came, and now we are here. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we are a completely non profit organization. Uh, yeah, now uh, I'll be gratitude to CDT Hub, of course, for, <laughs> for this place, uh, for the ability uh, for us to be able to, to show you our content, not, well, not only ours, but yours, of course, too. So, uh, if you want, to, to, to today's topic, yeah, today's topic is uh, marketing mix modeling in Python. By Stas Petrov, uh, and yeah, there's a nice uh, DALI generated picture uh, as I do always. Uh, yeah, I think it knows me too well because you know, you can see my. So, uh, yeah, and if you, one of you, want to make a talk, so please, please send your proposal to this email or to any one of us, any, just find any of our contact, uh, I will show you later and just ask anything you want, uh, any information regarding uh, how to become a speaker in our meetup. So, uh, if any one of you still don't know, we have a Telegram chat uh, and uh, yeah. Usually it's more crowded here. <laughs> <laughs> And if you want to make a lighting talk, so what a lighting talk? Uh, after the main talk, uh, we will be able to listen to, to, to talk, let's say, <laughs> to talk and to listen. Uh, if you want to make a maximum five minute talk, uh, right now, any topic, absolutely any, regarding Python or not Python, absolutely any. So if you want, just uh, put your name here and the uh, topic and uh, you will have your five minutes. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, after this, we'll go to Birship. Uh, half of you know where it is. <laughs> Very cozy, nice place. Uh, and, uh, yeah. So, let's, let's give a gratitude, uh, be gratitude to our speaker today. Alex, 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 it's me, I'm data scientist, I'm in the background, but by the way, uh, like I have six years of data science and eight years in data overall. Uh, we'll talk about today about marketing. Marketing, uh, basically I don't, I don't think that I need to explain what the marketing is, but the, actually is uh, dependent on the goal. Marketing could be performance, could be performance market, marketing, uh, the goal of the performance marketing is to acquire more user as much user as possible, uh, uh, as many users as possible, and there is a brand marketing that's the goal is uh, to increase the brand awareness, and of course there is offline and online marketing. Offline actually that's like the big billboards. The online marketing is like uh, Apple search ads, Google ads, and uh, Yandex ads so or something like that else. And the big trouble of the marketing was formulated by this guy like more than half, uh, more than 10 years, uh, 100 years ago. 
half of the money I spend on the advertising is wasted, the trouble is, uh, the trouble is I don't know which half. So uh, the answer for that uh, and the standard answer for that was like multi-touch attribution. Uh, for the many years it was the best answer. So we attach a cookie for, uh, to a potential customer. Uh, then we track what uh, all the interactions uh, with our advertising. Then we choose the attribution model. So is it last touch first touch, multi touch attribution, which means that like the, for for the last touch and the first touch, the winner takes it all. So it's like either the first uh, channel gives all the value or the last channel gives uh, gets all the value, and then we optimize them based on the cho chosen model. So the problem here is that we don't actually track everything and uh, it will be worse. The uh, obvious here is the GDPR, um, big, comp, big tech uh, removing the third party's cookie uh, and uh, a lot of, and it will be worse uh, because of the privacy sandbox. So uh, the answer for that is marketing mix modeling. Uh, why is the answer? Because it's independent on the privacy settings, on the rules. It's, um, we can do this for online and offline channels because you cannot touch cookie in offline channels, of course. Uh, but with the MLM, you can do this. And it's actually easy to interpret results. Uh, What's the idea behind them around? We will discuss it a bit later. Let's discuss two main effects in the advertising we have. So the first one is the effect called ad stock. This effect means basically that the effect of advertising spend, uh, sp uh, spending is spread over time. So the problem, the, the, the idea behind this uh, effect is that, okay, you saw the ad today, but you consider buying this uh, product, like you need some, to have some time to think of buying this product or like uh, getting some subscri subscription something. So, and uh, they, the, and you will buy this product like in a year, maybe uh, in a week. It depends on the product and depends on you. It depends on a lot of uh, stuff. So the second effect is uh, called saturation, which means that each, each subsequent dollar you, you spend is more effective uh, than the previous one or vice versa. So uh, this actually uh, means that uh, in the channel you can spend uh, two, uh, two times more because like probably in this channel the audience uh, is not your targeted audience that you want to acquire or maybe they're not interested in your product uh, so uh, you, ca you can't spend uh, um, infinitely more to get infinitely more users the dependence is not is not linear it's uh, uh, saturated over time uh, so the behind idea uh, the idea behind the MMM is linear regression so what uh, it's like the basic uh, machine learning algorithm which takes the uh, into account our marketing spend, uh, market uh, data, seasonality, uh, and we apply we apply a rate for every um, every value, and we're trying to feed this rate to get some dependent variable, which is the dependent variable is our uh, KPI, sales KPI. It could be purchases, it could be purchase amounts, it could be returns, it could be also um, conversion rates, something like this. So you get this, uh, you, you have this kind of equation and you uh, want that uh, fit it good to the dependent variable. So, but the one difference with the classic linear regression here is that we apply those two uh, effects to our marketing spend. So we apply first ad stock, then we apply uh, saturation effect. Uh, and then it goes to the linear regression. Uh, yeah. There are 
actually two approaches to the linear regression and thus two approaches to the market genetics model. So uh, the frequentist approach and Bayesian approach. Uh, frequentist approach gives you point estimates. It's like the most of the machine learning models also, uh, actually use this frequentist approach. So uh, you, the great of it is it's not don't need priors. It just feeds the data the most uh, uh, probable way. Uh, it can be hierarchical, and the thing is we need to approach to define the best model. So in uh, frequent just linear regression, there could be two set of the weights that gives the best model in terms of accuracy, but the problem is uh, that uh, these two models co can contradict themselves. So they can provide, uh, they can, you can get uh, two contradicted results uh, and conclusions uh, using these weights. So uh, this Bayesian, Bayesian approach uh, is actually kind of solve this problem because before the modeling you uh, need to uh, give it uh, you need to provide prior prior information uh, about uh, your um, parameters that you're trying to uh, trying to fit so and the, the great of it is that it gives you the not the point estimate, but posterior distribution estimate. So, like, you get not the point, but you get like what would be in the best case scenario and what would be in the kind of best best case scenario. And also, it can be hierarchical. So, uh, most popular libraries for the MMM out there is IMC Marketing. Lightweight, MMM, and Robin. Robin is uh, built by Meta and it's actually very cool, but it's in R. We are at Python Belgrade, so let's skip it. Uh, those uh, two lightweight, uh, MMM and PyMC, is Bayesian, and but uh, Google announced that they will replace it by another library called Medium. So it doesn't make sense to do the, something that will be soon outdated. So uh, I'll speak about PyMC marketing by PyMC Labs today. I, and I think it's more powerful in some terms that it's lightweight right now. So what is PyMC marketing? PyMC marketing is library built on top of probabilistic uh, programming framework uh, built especially for Bayesian probabilistic, prog uh, pro probabilistic programming. Uh, so what it actually needs to uh, do, it uh, has the predefined probabilistic uh, MMM with a lot of settings, so it's kind of have its skeleton uh, for the MMM uh, inside and you just provide the configuration for the model and uh, allows budget optimization for the marketing and allows, uh, since the newer version they announced, I think last week, they allows you uh, add leaf tests in your model. So uh, let's discuss, before we jump into the code, let's just discuss how the data should look like. It could be either weekly, daily uh, level data. Here it's uh, weekly, uh, weekly level data. Uh, so the minimum that you need is date, uh, Y, which is your sales KPI. Uh, X1, X2 is your channel span. That's basically it. The other two is like some events. It could be like Black Friday, Christmas, blah, 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 something like this. And uh, this one is for, uh, sorry, for, uh, for the seasonality. This one is just for, for seasonality. Uh, yeah. But the minimum that you need is just x1, x2, and uh, y. Uh, and actually, hmm? events is it, is it uh, historical data or it, so you, yeah, you it's a, only, uh, y and uh, events is it historical. Uh, everything is historical data. Ah, okay. Yeah. So and that's how it looks like in the code. Um, of course. I didn't put here like the code of the data preparation because it's like much more code there. 
but uh, mm, here what you define the model you define the column columns for the channels column, uh, control uh, control columns which is uh, for your events um, again like black friday you also uh, put at ad stock uh, max like so it's kind of the uh, maximum uh, weeks that uh, stock are applied on so like uh, and uh, seasonality um, it just provides by this uh, uh, by this graph so and the graph uh, gives you a component contribution to uh, your uh, and you feed the data um, with the just feed predict basically uh, and you, you see these cool plots that's okay this contributed that much that, that contributed that much uh, pretty cool right uh, but what's actually underneath uh, of the that's that's how model looks like that's the probabilistic model underneath of this uh, code so um, the easiest like uh, way to understand it okay we have like uh, channel data we have a, a stock transformation we need to define some alpha prior knowledge about our alpha and uh, we think that's better distributed with some uh, um, Yeah, you, no, you you you, you, ha you have the option. It's just uh, it's just default. Mm -hmm. This is one. This, this is default. But you have like uh, option to choose the alpha, uh, to choose the distribution of it, and choose the parameters of the distribution. Uh, and this is this is for ad stock. This is for saturation. So they applied. Uh, First, uh, the ad stock applied, then uh, applied saturation. There is a debate which is like the better way to apply them, but it doesn't really matter uh, in the, this sense. Uh, then you uh, have like uh, better uh, uh, distributed half normal and so on and so on. Uh, so let's go, okay, for the next slide. Uh, yeah, and as it built on top of PyMC, it's actually um, possible to use the default PyMC model evaluation. You uh, have here the posterior distribution of every uh, parameter uh, that are on the previous slide, basically, and the table is just representation uh, of the table uh, in the table uh, uh, view. Um, yeah. Uh, of course, uh, it has a uh, in-sample and out-of-sample predictions. Uh, in-sample, how it's fitted uh, to the train data. Uh, out-of-sample, uh, you can uh, see how it will look like uh, in the future or uh, do the validation and look at uh, the performance of the model. Uh, also, it has the situation curves, uh, fitted situation curves. Uh, that's uh, I don't know actually what, what to say here just the situation curves actually the, the thing is uh, you won't see these cool situation curves in real life because it's like too narrow uh, probability there and the, the coolest part of it is the marketing uh, budget optimization so what's what is showed here, uh, we fitted the model uh, and we kind of freeze the parameters that we fitted and uh, what we're trying to do is to, uh, okay, let's just, our budget will be the same, but is it possible to, uh, to change the distribution of the budget from one channel to another to get uh, more uh, in our sales? So the model says kind of yes, and uh, initial one is the blue one. The, uh, in scenario two, you have like the uh, mean value here, the uh, high density, uh, this, this is like kind of confidence interval for, for, uh, for this channel is here, but 
where the initial one was like uh, a little bit lower, and here initial was also a little bit lower. Here is the uh, mean contribution is higher, uh, and that's the cool stuff. But let's talk about the problems actually with the Bayesian MMM and with every actually Bayesian MMM. Uh, it's unclear how to set the priors. So it's unclear how to define those uh, uh, distribution parameters of this distribution. In some cases you can get it from the data, but if you have like a lot of data about in terms of uh, multi distribution, you can kind of get the, the uh, idea of how it probably looks like. Uh, but this, uh, but if it's unclear, so you probably will get the bias prior. So you probably believe that some channel performs better than another, and uh, it's sometimes it's not the case. But if you believe this, you will provide the bias prior, which is probably will, will lead you to a biased model, and the biased model. Uh, is actually any MMM needs to be tested, but bias model needs to be tested. Uh, not more, but again, you need to, to test it very well before like actually believing it. And the only way to test it, not maybe the only way, but the most common way to test it is leaf test, which is actually not uh, that uh, cheap. Uh, and uh, clear how to do this. Uh, and the other problem is the multicollinearity, uh, which leads us to like multicollinearity, and then it's when your channels are uh, channel span are collinear. So you, uh, I don't know, in some if you're trying to scale up, you simultaneously. Uh, increase the uh, spend over the marketing and thus you get the uh, some collinearities in the in the channel span data so uh, this leads to uncertain estimates uh, another big problem which is which isn't solved in the modern MMM libraries but uh, in PyMC marketing you can just take the uh, skeleton of the model it built in build by itself because it's on PyMC uh, is that assumes that uh, assuming that we fix the at stock and saturation curves uh, in time so like it doesn't make sense to do this because like here's the obvious example imagine we are selling cheap obvious area tickets uh, during COVID and for most of the channels our saturation curve will look like something something like blue and then it's like February 2022 in Russia and we're starting to like seek, uh, seek cheap tickets to Serbia for example and saturation curves are like this so um, yeah uh, and it's actually not solved yet and I don't know if like if there is a great answer answer for 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 that problem, um, and this actually leads us to conclusion. Uh, some conclusions: MMM is powerful tool for marketing budget optimization. In terms of like, if you have the clean data, of course, uh, PMC marketing is powerful for Bayesian MMM. Uh, like any MMM requires a lot of independent testing as leaf test, A-B test, probably, of course. Uh, it, might be not, uh, it might be impossible to build a reliable MMM because of the data, because everything changes, like the saturation curves changes uh, and uh, the world changes. What world? Uh, and it's just like, it's just another way of view to marketing optimization strategy so it can be used like independently without any testing without MTA without uh, without like just looking at the data and that's it folks this is
the link for? Yeah, it's all my links. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there is Twitter, and uh, I write in Twitter in Russian, so sorry for. 